Galera, a gente já começa a live, tá? Cento e três. Ok. Então, só para avisar os brasileiros, essa palestra é em inglês. Totalmente em inglês. O sistema de certificado é o mesmo da primeira palestra. Você vai, o responsável pela palestra é o Marco Martins. Então, vocês vão entrar nesse QR Code ou ali no link e botar que o Marco Martins é o responsável do Kalina nesta palestra. Ok? Vou deixar aqui mais alguns minutinhos, mais dois minutinhos. E o Marco Martins vai ser o responsável da palestra, não esqueçam. Uh, yes, okay.
Yeah, it's okay. Galera, vamos começar, beleza? Daí no final da palestra e durante a palestra a gente vai botando o link e no final a gente vai botar o QR Code, tá? Não, era o Marco Martins. Ok. Uh, thank you, Sofia. Um, so... Uh, good morning to everyone. Uh, I'm very excited uh, to be here and to talk uh, for Brazil audience. I would like to thank the orga organizers for this invitation. Uh, I was it was very unexpected unexpected to receive it. Uh, I must say I've never been to Brazil, so uh, today I will be speak for the first time. Uh, for the Brazilian audience and for the first time uh, for the architectural community in general. Um, this is a bit exciting, uh, but I hope that the material uh, of the lecture will be useful to you. Uh, at the same time, it is very pleasant that uh, the topic of Siberia worries people uh, which are living on the other side of the earth. Uh, it is quite amazing. So. If you will have any questions during the presentation, you can ask them uh, uh, in, the, in the process. Uh, I will also will be glad to hear opinions uh, because uh, I'm very interested in how the audience in Brazil and Brazil, uh, 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 w which opinion they have on this uh, book and this uh, topic. Uh, today, uh, I'm planning to talk about photography in arch and architecture. Uh, I must say that uh, my knowledge of architecture is very limited and concerns mainly the post-Soviet space. Uh, and therefore, I will mostly talk about the creation of uh, this photo book uh, called Concrete Siberia. Mm. Uh, it was uh, released in uh, this this year in June. Mm. This book I shot uh, I shot uh, all photographs for this book. Mm. So. Uh, the book is in English, uh, and it was uh, shot by me in six cities in Siberia this winter, in February and March. Um, this its content is a photographic study of the post-war architecture of these cities, and if you want, you can order it in the website of the publishing house Zipografica, uh, whose idea this project was. Uh, so the circulation of the book, I think, is uh, unlimited, so you can order it a in any time. Um, I will tell a little about myself. Uh, I'm a photographer and an artist. Uh, I live in St. Petersburg, uh, which is the second largest city in Russia, and is situated. And St. Petersburg is situated quite quite far from Siberia. Uh, my artistic practice consists of works in different techniques, but uh, photography is the dominant medium. Uh, uh, if uh, we will have time at the end, I can show you some of my personal projects. Uh, but uh, I should say also that uh, I have a job that not, is not related to photography and art, and I shoot my personal projects in my free time. Uh, before working with the publishing house Zupergrafica, I didn't have uh, 
chance to shoot the architecture in large uh, quantities. So uh, I'm uh, absolutely no expert and in architectural photography. In general, uh, some custom shootings uh, rarely happen. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, I I work with uh, some uh, commercial shootings very rarely because I prefer to work on my own. Um, uh, but uh, there was already several projects that we did uh, with this publishing house uh, before Siberia. So they asked me. That's why they asked me to shoot these books because we have a previous experience together. I will give you a little background story about our um, collaboration on previous projects. Um, uh, Zopographica is a publishing house from Poland uh, and um, it is aimed on the public which is interested in architecture. I will start, uh, I will show you some pictures. Uh, I'll start my uh, sharing a file with pictures. Uh, yeah. So <laughs> the, our, our our cooperation began uh, in the end of 2016 uh, with uh, the shooting. It happened by the accident. Uh, a friend of mine asked me to help uh, him and to shoot uh, uh, this picture because uh, he couldn't. But uh, he was the he had the agreement with the publisher, so it was necessary to take one photo with a, a local person against in Saint Petersburg against the against the background of the famous modernist building. In general, it seems to me uh, that it would not be very difficult, so I agreed. Uh, and but uh, probably I would re refuse in refuse the, the, the this shooting in other situation because uh, in general I shoot something uh, absolutely uh, different. Uh, so the the result was uh, such a picture. Uh, it 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 looks like very strange. Mm. Uh, and uh, suddenly it uh, suddenly it uh, it it was uh, getting. It was uh, somehow got into the Russian uh, social networks uh, and it become uh, a mem. Uh, if you understand, uh, like a very very funny picture, uh, and uh, I had several um, photoshopped uh, versions. Uh, uh, of uh, this uh, picture found on social networks, um, and then, uh, but uh, but uh, the publisher was satisfied, and uh, a, a, a year later they offered me to shoot um, this uh, postcard uh, about Moscow, which with the views of. Uh, some architectural interesting places, um, but not obvious. Uh, so to say, like they are hiding, hi hidden from uh, the main flows of tourists. Um, the project uh, was uh, it was this project was uh, more interesting for me, and uh, I decided to to to, to shoot uh, uh, this type of pictures. Um, so I I liked uh, how the postcards were uh, look like uh, in in the fi in the final 
version. So I was also satisfied with this project. Mm, it was nice. It has nice, nice design and uh, it was a set of eight, uh, eight uh, postcards. Mm. Since I took uh, much more than eight, eight photographs, uh, which were used in this set, uh, one year ago, uh, the publisher asked me to about a new book to cooperate with them. Uh, in it was dedicated uh, to the architecture of the countries of the Eastern Bloc and includes some photographs not only from Moscow but also St. Petersburg where I live. Mm. It was uh, much easier to shoot St. Petersburg uh, because uh, there was no need to go anywhere uh, and uh, I agreed to this offer. Mm. The result was the book, uh, this book uh, I'm showing, uh, where we, with uh, two Russian citizens, Moscow and St. Petersburg, uh, they were cities from the other countries of the former socialist camp like Kiev, uh, East Berlin, uh, Warsaw, and Budapest. Um, the book uh, has a very good design and infographics, um, and the reviews were quite positive on on that. Um, so here are the examples of uh, photo photographs I made in Russia. Um, and after that, a year ago, also in the winter, the publisher, the publisher again turned with a proposal. They say, they said uh, they're going to make a photo book entirely about Siberia. Mm. And uh, uh, proposed me to become an author and uh, make all the photographs uh, for this book. Uh, I, I liked about the ideas because the Siberia was only I was uh, only one, only in one city of Siberia before that, and it was in, interesting to me to go there again and to visit other cities. Uh, I also liked the idea to make uh, a personal book, so uh, I agreed and. Uh, also, I would like to probably uh, uh, provide some information about Siberia because uh, the for Brazil is it is quite far. Mm. I show you. Mm. Uh, Siberia is a waste. Uh, Geographic region or in the Asian part of Russia from uh, bordered uh, 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 bordered by Euro Mountains on the west and the Pacific Ocean on the east and the Arctic Ocean on the north. So it is a very huge territory. Um, uh, I would like to show you some borders. Uh, I open uh, another another presentation. Uh, everything is okay. Oh, okay. Mm, so, uh, so the, okay. Uh, perhaps I may. I will first try to say something. Uh, the borders of the borders of Siberia can be defined in different ways, and uh, uh, depending on uh, depending on the definition, the the total area of Siberia ranges from 
9 million kilometers to uh, 13 million kilometers. Um, so it is it may be compared to um, to Canada uh, uh, so Siberia accounts for uh, from 50 to 77 percent of the territory of Russia uh, even with the minimal estimate mm. Siberia is very rich in resources uh, and its territory is uh, concentrated uh, uh, with 85% of uh, platinum uh, all rush of all Russian reserve of platinum, 71% uh, of nickel, 89% uh, of oil, 95% uh, of gas, and 40% of gold. Uh, and most of the uh, uh, most of the polluted cities in Russia are located in Siberia. Mm. Mm. Including uh, Norisk, which is the most uh, one of the most polluted cities in in the world. Uh, the, mo the main reason uh, for the ecological disadvantage is the location uh, of uh, the Siberian cities uh, since uh, 1950s and 60s um, uh, because of the location in the cities of such dirty industries like metallurgy, heat power, engineering, uh, cellulose industry. Uh, However, in significant parts of Siberia, far from industrial centers, um, the ecological situation still remains, um, uh, and the nature uh, remains uh, practically untouched. So, uh, for many, uh, for many, for especially for the foreigners, the concept of Siberia is associated with a very cold climate, um, and. Uh, uh, so, uh, the temperatures uh, in the winter can reach minus 40 degrees uh, and um, on the north in the northern part of uh, Siberia the, uh, the the period of time with the temperatures above uh, 10, uh, 10, 10 uh, degrees of Celsius uh, maybe less than one month. So, uh, so it is important uh, uh, about uh, to know about this uh, very uh, very bad conditions uh, uh, when you when you see this uh, architecture in uh, when you see the architecture like in Norisk because. Um, or the permafrost, uh, which is under the under the ground, so the uh, the city is built with uh, piles. The houses are built with the piles. Mm. So I will continue with uh, the and tell you about the shooting of the book uh, at the very first moment uh, when. Uh, we considered this project. Uh, the number of cities was uh, eight cities, uh, but um, it wasn't uh, re realistic because uh, it turned out that uh, I had I didn't have much time to shoot, um, and uh, I I cannot uh, I cannot shoot uh, more than twenty days um, uh, in total. So. This is a, the significantly small for uh, for such a number of cities because of the distance between cities and uh, you need some uh, kind of immersion in the atmosphere and the context of the cities. Um, as a result, uh, uh, we begin to um, as a result we uh, decided to. Uh, that uh, it will be nice to shoot six cities 
uh, and this city is uh, Omsk, uh, Novosibirsk, Irkutsk, Krasnoyarsk, Norilsk, and Yakutsk. Um, this number of cities already, uh, 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 it will be, it, it will be more chances to shoot, uh, and uh, the, the schedule wasn't so so wasn't be so tight as a, as if if the number was eight. And so when I started to shoot, uh, I sh I shot uh, from two to four days in each city. So the average uh, number of days was three. And um, I can show you some images uh, from the book. Uh, maybe uh, someone from you have already seen uh, this picture. I will tell you a little about the uh, technical side of shooting. As I said, the idea of the project of, was uh, from the originated from the publishing house. Um, and so they offered me a number of uh, requirements that they had uh, for the content and the images. Mm. Uh, the book uh, for the book uh, it was needed about 120 photographs. Mm. Another an another requirement was the presence of snow, if possible, and if possible, mm, it was necessary to shoot in cloudy weather. Uh, keep the light soft. Uh, so the task was uh, to achieve neutrality so it, so, so it doesn't distract from the architecture. Um, sorry. So there was no problem with the snow in, in Siberia, uh, but uh, the different problems with weather uh, appeared periodically appeared because Siberia is quite sunny in winter. It is unlike Saint Petersburg, where I live, where it is cloudy almost all winter, and you can shoot a lot of time. Uh, but the Siberia has a lot of sun in winter, so there were days uh, uh, when it was necessary to wait for the weather, and if there was no weather. Then um, I tried to shoot in the morning or evening uh, when uh, there would be no contrast lighting, lighting. Or, for example, from the shadow side of the building. Uh, Uh, there was many problems because of that, uh, especially the logistics and uh, my traveling, for my traveling. Mm, uh, in some cities, there were situations where was no cloudy days and um, not all planned photographs were, were, include, were included in the book. Uh, so there were some very interesting uh, buildings that had to be excluded from the book because uh, it was a very hard picture. Um, I also had uh, a list of locations uh, in each city. It was chosen by the publisher. Um, and after everything was uh, shot, uh, uh, also, the publisher made a sample and uh, the sequence of the book. Um, in this book, uh, the, in this book, the, there are mainly two types of photographs. Uh, the mo uh, these are the most famous um, buildings uh, in the style of Soviet modernism, and also various residential areas like this. Mm, that were especially planned by the urbanists uh, in Soviet times, so the residents could spend time um, there more comfortably, was uh, at least uh, supposed to be. 
Mm. And the, the districts, uh, micro districts, um, as I said, they, they were consisted of the multi story uh, panel houses um, like this. Uh, they are called uh, in Russia uh, Khrushchevka and Brezhnevka. Uh, I, I can try to explain uh, this word. Mm. Uh, the, the, the term uh, Khrushchevka uh, is understood uh, as a Soviet panel or brick residential buildings, uh, usually five story with a small apartment. Uh, it is named by the name of Nikita Khrushchev um, during uh, which uh, the, the, during uh, uh, the period of power, uh, his, during the period of his power, it, it was began the massive construction in the USSR of the of the houses like uh, on the picture. So he came to power after Stalin uh, under the reign of the Stalin. Uh, the houses were built mainly in style of neoclassicism uh, with a large number of decorative elements uh, and they are so-called uh, Stalinka mm, or Stalinka in a plural form. Um, is also a is also a colloquial name. Uh, it, it is the name of a series of houses built in USSR, uh, and uh, but they were built uh, from late late sixties to nineties. So uh, it was mainly during the period of Leonid Brezhnev, um, and uh, the difference is that um, they have uh, the improvements. Uh, uh, compared to Khrushchevka. Uh, so, in fact, the Brezhnev houses are something between uh, two opposite principles uh, in urban development, like it may be called like worst, worse than uh, Stalinka or improved Khrushchevka. Mm. Uh, in the Soviet period of history, there was twice a moment uh, when the natural development of architecture was interrupted uh, under the influence of ideological reasons. Mm. So it, it turned uh, 180 degrees. Uh, the first time in 1932, uh, when Stalin uh, completely concentrated the power on himself, and uh, it was a transition from avant-garde architecture back to classical, as more understandable to to the common people. Uh, constructivist buildings were considered too simple, too simple and modest. Uh, it was in dissonance with um, with uh, grandiose plans uh, for the forced industrialization and um, high rates of development of the country. Uh, and the second time uh, such a turn uh, happened in 1956 after the death of Stalin, when uh, with the rise of, of the power, with the rise uh, of Khrushchev and uh, giving him the power. Uh, the previous uh, Stalinist course was um, was heavily criticized uh, in all in all spheres of public life. Um, uh, Stalinist uh, architecture was uh, has also undergone a revision and was abolished as a part of campaign uh, to combat ex excesses uh, in construction and design. Mm. Uh, and the and the official course uh, in country was uh, also taken 
uh, in the direction of cheap uh, manufacture housing. Uh, also important to say that uh, this book has an um, uh, introduction written by the architectural critic uh, Konstantin Budanin. Uh, he lived in Moscow um, not not uh, so long time ago. We had a, a joint presentation with him uh, for Russian-speaking audience, um, uh, where he gave a theoretical background for this book from an architectural point of view. Uh, 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 many of his thesis are in this pre uh, introduction, but I will allow myself to to voice uh, some parts of his ideas uh, today. So from his point of view, um, there are two important uh, points uh, in this book. Uh, well, we, we, uh, uh, the first, uh, um, it is, uh, I must say that uh, these six cities are completely different in uh, their nature and their history. Uh, uh, for example, the Novosibirsk is a large center. Uh, uh, there was a an architectural school uh, uh, before the Soviet Union and Norilsk, for example, has a completely different story. It is a city camp. Um, uh, the construction of Norilsk started uh, was started by prisoners, um, and before that, it was nothing in this space. Uh, but nevertheless, the uh, specificity of this landscape. Um, is that they are almost uh, the same. Uh, uh, when photographs are taken uh, in residential areas, it is impossible to distinguish one city from another. And so this is uh, the specific uh, Soviet approach to urbanization of, of the spaces. Um, uh, the universal form of the panel house of the panel house was found, and it, it turned out to be the tool that can be applied anywhere in the world. Uh, such houses were built, uh, for example, in Chile, in, in Chile, or in Africa. Uh, uh, and the Soviet Union export, exported uh, the same houses. And the second point uh, that uh, there was a moment in history when uh, Khrushchev uh, architecture replaced Stalinist and one architecture school uh, changed uh, another and proposed a new project, which consisted uh, in the creation of micro districts. Um, and also the, the use of new construction technologies and the final construction. Uh, a feature of Siberian cities uh, is that they have uh, a new vector in development aimed at uh, creating a condition uh, for life. This is uh, the difference between uh, Khrushchev architecture and Stalin, Stalinist architecture. Uh, uh, for the first uh, time, the mass housing has appeared, and people uh, got the personal space, uh, uh, private space for with this uh, housing. Uh, what uh, else was the specificity of Soviet architecture? Uh, uh, there are residential buildings that were made according to standard projects, and there are public buildings uh, that were made according to individual projects uh, like this uh, theater. Uh, they were developed in Moscow. Uh, such uh, public houses were developed in Moscow, and 
what were the strengths of service architecture uh, uh, that uh, it, uh, uh, since uh, mm, so the strength of Soviet architecture was this building like uh, very big uh, theaters or circuses because uh, Soviet ideology was aimed to build a communist society. Uh, so uh, they invested uh, many money and mm, an effort to build such uh, uh, to build uh, the public buildings, uh, not private buildings. Uh, they were created very impressive. Um, for example, the circuses uh, were built in every city. Uh, today, in the most part, uh, such buildings are not possible. Uh, most of the most of the residential panel buildings were built as a temporary solution. Uh, uh, but uh, in Russia, there, there is a phrase, uh, uh, the statement that there is nothing more permanent than temporary. Uh, they turned out to be eternal, such a building. Um, in in Naisk, for example, there there is no new construction at all, and people are supposed to live uh, uh, for a long time in the houses built in 60s and 70s. Um, another feature of uh, this Siberian cities is uh, cities, um, not only Siberian, but I think uh, uh, the this Soviet uh, industrial landscape planning feature that um, the cities uh, have very large empty spaces. Uh, um, this is uh, maybe explained by the fact that uh, the land available for communists, uh, it was the land was free and uh, it, it wasn't necessary to think about how to save space. Uh, it has uh, positive and negative uh, side. Uh, on the one hand, uh, because uh, of the light and space is visible and uh, in summertime is very, these areas are very green. Mm, on the other hand, uh, and it is one of the problems of the Soviet city that um, th th this, uh, this plant uh, space is mostly or oriented uh, towards the young people. So if you are getting old, um, you, uh, it is very difficult to cover such uh, big spaces when you, for example, go to, to the shop or something like that. Mm. Um, but they could be more compact, uh, for example, in Western Europe, uh, the micro the size of micro districts is uh, significantly smaller than the Soviet micro districts. Um, it's uh, it's interesting that the so uh, examples of such Soviet architecture can be found in the West, um, but there are. The specific features, uh, uh, which uh, um, which are inherent uh, only in Soviet projects, uh, like uh, the housing uh, has always been only in panels. Um, uh, although at the same point uh, in the West uh, they stopped stopped doing this. Uh, in one in some moment another feature um, of the soviet uh, archi architectural planning 
is uh, the is is its program. Uh, for example, uh, such types of buildings like uh, circuses uh, could be built in places or cities where there is no need in them. But um, this is a circus uh, in uh, Krasnoyarsk, and such circuses uh, were. There was a program like program to build such buildings in almost all of the cities. Mm. Mm. So the the answer to the question um, how to live um, was invented uh, once in Soviet Union uh, in the late fifties. Uh, I, I repeat in the period of Khrushchev reign and uh, and this solution uh, of the question existed uh, almost throughout all the Soviet period without changing. Uh, if in 50s and 60s uh, such architecture was adequate, uh, was uh, fitted, uh, and but in in seventies, uh, the world already began began to move away from from this concept. But uh, you know, uh, uh, the Soviet Union uh, continued to build uh, the same thing, uh, despite the fact that people are different, uh, the cultures and uh, the cultures and uh, landscapes are also different. But uh, the answer uh, on question how to live um, and uh, is not uh, only one is not one, only one answer. But uh, in Soviet Union there was only one answer, and the answer was uh, such a, a panel houses. It may be called uh, totalitarian in uh, Soviet uh, architectural projects. Mm. So the the situation uh, continues from uh, the Soviet period after the uh, collapse of US, USSR and Russia continues uh, to build about the same, like very mm, similar buildings, uh, multi-story mm, multi-story blocks, and uh, one or two floor buildings are very uh rare um, so uh I, I i talked something about uh the the content of the book and uh, made some conclusions about uh soviet um, architecture in general um, uh, about the buildings which you can see on the photograph uh, maybe uh, if there are any questions I can answer. We we have Yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, the first question. Just wait a minute, we're getting the questions. Galera, se vocês quiserem perguntar, podem perguntar agora. Mais coisa, a gente vai começar ali as perguntas. So the first question is What do you think that turns Siberian architect eh, Siber Siberian architecture so different from others? Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. 
as I said, uh, the the Soviet architecture was very homogenic. Uh, was very homogenic uh, on the on the whole territory of Soviet Union, and um, I think uh, there's no quite uh, many uh, special in Siberia, Siberia architecture because it's just uh, the copy of the same architecture in in the most uh, in the most cities uh, uh, of the period uh, in which. Uh, such an architecture, architecture was developed, as I said, uh, from 50s to 90s. Yeah, but um, there are some places in Siberia, like um, uh, areas uh, uh, very north areas, um, where the uh, the architecture is special because you need somehow to uh, to take an account uh, these temperatures and uh, you have a permafrost uh, that building can be uh, uh, should be uh, constructed on the piles uh, and I think uh, that um, the the Soviet uh, uh, architectures uh, were the first uh, who one of the first uh, who pioneered in such a building of uh, in quite uh, extreme north um, latitudes. I think so. I think uh, the Siberian architecture may be. Um, Hold special only because of the cold, but uh, in general, it uh, just uh, repeats uh, all the Soviet architecture in any city. Yeah. The second question is. Do you believe the extreme cold and the fact that the population is concentrated in certain spots influence the, the way the architecture is in Siberia? Mm, uh, sorry, uh, could you just uh, repeat? Uh, mm. Could you please repeat a question? Do you believe the extreme cold and the fact that the population is concentrated in certain spots influence the way the architecture is in Siberia? Mm. Uh, certain spots? Mm. Certain areas. Like there is no I population think. in a lot of areas in Siberia, but the most part of population is just in a few areas. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, so the question was about that, uh, uh, do you believe? Uh, uh, is there is that about um, uh, uh, just the first the first uh, half of the question? Could you please repeat? Sorry. Mm, the extreme cold. Do you believe the extreme cold, the weather, the extreme weather, the fact that it's too cold? influence the and the fact that there is the most part of the population of Siberia just in some mm -hmm. areas but not in the others influence the yeah, architecture okay. yeah i see mm. yes uh, uh, sure, sure some uh, very extreme uh, old areas um, uh, in general they are uh, there are less people than uh, more warm areas, but uh, the, uh, the population um, 
the this situation uh, explain, uh, explains also because uh, that uh, the most of resources in Siberia are located in such extreme cold areas, and um, the cities are built were built um, on uh, in such areas where the resources were found. And uh, if the resources were found in very cold areas, um, uh, they they developed uh, something like city or uh, something that became a city at the, at, at the future. And uh, and uh, no one was uh, very concerned about. I mean, not concerned, but. Uh, uh, the Soviet um, uh, uh, the Soviet administration wasn't uh, actually very um, uh, very uh, very Uh, it wasn't very cared about uh, uh, the how the people feel uh, feel themselves on the on these areas. Uh, they were mainly concentrated to uh, develop country and uh, uh, to you know the ideology. Uh, so. Uh, they could uh, send people to very extreme areas just to um, uh, just to gain the resources. Uh, I don't know if it's the answer, but um, and so the answer is uh, and yes and no. I think it is and depends and uh, from one hand it depends. Uh, but uh, from the other hand, uh, the, the people who didn't decide themselves where they want to live. Yeah. Next question, we sent it in text at the chat, but I will read it also. Okay. Consider the extreme weather, do you believe the architecture helps in the way to give a feeling of reception and comfort, or in your opinion, this could be done better? Um, okay, I see. Um, Yes, there. I think the architectures uh, were tried. At least they tried to make uh, some comfort. Uh, but uh, many things depended on uh, how uh, the houses were constructed, because um, uh, because they had the limited uh, financial support from the state. And uh, the materials were very cheap, and uh, uh, despite the architecture pl may, uh, could plan uh, very nice, very nice uh, micro districts, and uh, which were uh, 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 which were um, aimed to make some comfort. But uh, the lack of the adequate material uh, for the construction was a problem, and um, it 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 um, and uh, some houses uh, were wasn't um, uh, uh, very very uh, suitable for such conditions. And uh, uh, as, for example, I, 
can show you uh, uh, one photograph. from Yakut. Uh, so on the right picture, you see the panel house with uh, something like um, isolation uh, made, uh, made. I don't know what is the material, but uh, the, the sense is uh, it, it was uh, the flat was surrounded by uh, there's something like foam or maybe you can see here the I think the border of the of the flat and it is uh, surrounded like this warming material um, as you see uh, 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 from the one hand uh, the architecture uh, solves the problem uh, about uh, private space uh, and people uh, people get their own apartment, but uh, because of the uh, cheap materials, uh, they have another problem. For example, mm. not everything uh, was depend was depending uh, on archi architecture. Mm -hmm. uh, when I shot uh, the project about Siberia, um, I actually um, did it in the, another regime uh, uh, compared with what I should uh, in usual situation. Because um, if I if I shoot my own projects, I, I look at uh, another things maybe. Uh, and because uh, the publisher had some uh, requirements for the for the pictures, um, I I search for I search for the uh, for the form of solution I think uh, for picture mostly uh, just uh, it, it it was it should be the very um, very empty atmosphere, maybe a, a good light, um, um, very strong forms of the building. It should be uh, represented on photograph. Um, uh, I don't know what 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 the emotion it uh, may. Mm, what the emotions people feel uh, when look at this photograph because I cannot uh, separate myself uh, from cannot separate myself from the from these pictures. I just uh, remember that um, I was I didn't feel uh, my much much feelings because I had a very very few time. Uh, I just uh, tried to uh, mm, visit all all the locations and make uh, mm, all the photographs I I was supposed to make. But uh, when people are look at the photographs, they feel all very very different very different. Uh, differently it is depending on uh, their or their own experience perhaps uh, for example people who didn't uh, live in live in, the, in Saint Petersburg or, sorry in uh, the Soviet Union uh, never experienced uh, such uh, conditions of life mm, they uh, look uh, this picture from the one position but also, there are people who lived uh, in 
uh, Khrushchevka on Brezhnevka, and they moved uh, to Europe, for example. Um, um, and there's another position. Uh, also, uh, some people just uh, feel the nostalgia for the Soviet times, and they are proud. Uh, they're proud that the buildings of their cities are in this book, um, and uh, they find they they find the images uh, quite nice and. Mm. Uh, but but there's another group of people who, when they look at these photographs, uh, they say, "Oh my God, I live there. Uh, oh my God, this this is very very mm, uh, horrible." Yes. Uh, I don't know what feel what what feel the Brazilian people because. I, I suppose that you don't have much such an architecture. So uh, for me, it's interesting. Uh, what are you feeling? Uh, what is your feeling from the photograph? Yes, sure, sure. I'm ready. Um, the question is, do you believe there was an expressive change in people's lifestyle in Siberia and Russian countryside in general with the end of the Soviet Union? You can answer it as long as you feel comfortable to. Um, this is uh, something like very big noise when you told. Um, uh, I'm not sure if I uh, understood correctly. Uh, Could you just uh, repeat because it's, it's something like a uh, very um, uh, strange noise. Yes, true. I can show you again the book. Mm, expressive change, yes, I see. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, uh, there was some change, of course, since the Soviet time in people's lifestyle. Mm. And countryside. Yeah. Uh, I think um, the change in our lifestyle can be expressed in um, uh, for example, this, you can see uh, that uh, some uh, advertisement uh, advertisement uh, on the building, uh, which was impossible, impossible. The the, the commercial uh, the commercialization became. Uh, 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 became uh, to these buildings after the collapse of the Soviet Union. 
not only these buildings, but uh, you can see many um, uh, shops, uh, private shops in this building. Uh, you can see the uh, 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 such uh, on the balconies, uh, such uh, um, so uh, such a glass uh, that people made. Uh, so it became uh, more individual. The these houses became more individual uh, from the one hand uh, because people started to started to improve them by themselves, like uh, these conditioners you see on uh, the wall. Uh, and uh, but uh, at the same time, these buildings uh, continue to uh, continue to make to be uh, to get in older, and they became very at the, at the very pure condition, very fast. Uh, so they look very very. Really horrible. Some some of these buildings look uh, mm, very pure. Mm. Mm. So uh, this the change in in lifestyle. Mm, I think uh, more um, concentrated in uh, the inside the buildings and the in the flats. Uh, uh, for example, in Norisk, uh, the people, the the city with very homogeneous uh, uh, development, uh, the because of the very cold um, conditions, uh, people uh, mostly not uh, walking, uh, not go for a walk. They just go another people uh, visiting another people in their apartment uh, and uh, these uh, apartments are very very rich inside uh, for example so this is which was impossible in the Soviet times because uh, all people uh, lived uh, the same the same way and uh, had uh, the same amount of money, more or less, um, but when the uh, economic relationships changed, uh, some people who li who are living in the very uh, in the cities like Norisk, which is uh, concentrated near uh, uh, resources, uh, these people. And uh, also because of the ecology, these people, uh, the 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 enterprise based uh, people, very very big money for for, for the work, uh, just uh, just uh, not just not them to. Uh, to get away from the job, so these people have a very big um, um, salary and can improve their uh, flats uh, uh, in a uh, in special way, I think. The last question we have here is how did your interest for photograph and these scenarios start? Mm. How did I interest it in photograph? Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah. Yes, my interest in uh, photographs was the beginning from the from the I think the traveling uh, when I uh, 
when I was a student, uh, I was uh, studying at the astronomical department uh, in St. Petersburg University. So then I became an astronomer. Mm. And uh, uh, at, at some moment, um, we should go on the student practice on the south region of the Russia. And I, uh, um, I decided that I need somehow to save, uh, save this um, trip in, in my memory. And uh, uh, so I decided to buy a camera. It was in 2007. And uh, from this point, I was uh, very involved in photography. It was very, uh, I was, I, I very like the, this um, uh, uh, yes, I very like the photography. And after that, um, when I finished um, finished the university, I decided to be a photographer. So my astronomical background um, uh, ended in the university, and then I became a photographer first. I was interested uh, in the photojournalism. Mm, about for about two or three years uh, when I first started to shoot. Um, and I started after the university, I studied uh, for the photojournalism uh, photographer. Uh, and when I finished this education, uh, I understood that um, I don't satisfy it with the but the uh, journalistic images, uh, because they look very, very um, uh, simple and uh, illustrative. Uh, then I started to search uh, what, what uh, was uh, the different scenarios in photography, uh, and I was in also invo I was involved later in art photography. I uh, started to learn the art, the art photography. Uh, it was also for about uh, two or three years. Uh, yes. Uh, and uh, after that, I became to reach myself to other mediums, not only photography, but also video, uh, installation. Mm. Yes, but uh, the photography as a uh, as if this is my uh, primary medium I'm working with. Uh, uh, so hmm. it is interesting that I start uh, this why why start this project uh, the architectural shooting. Uh, because it wasn't supposed uh, uh, in any way to my um, to my uh, photographic experience, uh, but it, as, as I said, it started very accidentally, and uh, uh, for me it was interesting because it, it is connected with um, with the traveling. Mm, which I uh, very like. I very like to travel and photograph uh, during the travels. So many of my projects are uh, made made uh, or continuous uh, when I traveling. For example, I often uh, go uh, for different Russian cities and uh, shooting the landscapes. Uh, in searching the uh, the similarities in the similarities in um, different places. Uh, so the the idea of the of this book was very similar to my artistic practice. Uh, that's why uh, 
that's why I decided to uh, to shoot uh, to shoot uh, uh, go these six cities and do this project. Yeah. I was very noisy, uh, no idea. Uh, we have more than 10 minutes if you want to close the, the lecture. Say something to close the lecture, you can say it. Uh, uh, okay, I would like to thank, I would like to thank uh, all the people who watched uh, my presentation. I hope uh, it was uh, uh, it was uh, useful, and I hope you will learn something uh, new about uh, the Russia and Soviet Union architecture. Uh, thank you very much for for the interest and for your time. Okay, thanks, Alex. Thank you. So uh, Aperton said that the lecture was amazing.